1879, a 32-year-old elementary school dropout perfected the design for an invention that would change the course of history, the light bulb. You all know Thomas Edison, yes? Okay, yes? yes. Okay. <laughs> but more than just change the course of history, Edison's light bulb changed the way that we view the dark. 32 years old he did this. All right, so I turned 32 this year. And I'm thinking to myself, well, he, he changed the world doing that. I gotta, I gotta change something, you know? But I don't, you know, I don't do science. I failed physics twice. I'm an artist, I'm a composer, I write musicals. And I love, I love musicals. You know, the great thing about musicals is that you get a community of artists that comes together with a community of patrons. And they all meet up in this one space together and they take part in this event that can only happen one time in that way. It really is a miracle. And so my, my writing partner, Griffin Matthews, and I have been going around and singing songs from our musical, Witness Uganda, over the last year. And Witness Uganda is a documentary style musical that really tells the story of how Griffin started a nonprofit in Uganda. But Griffin's not a nonprofit guy at all. He's an actor. In fact, that's the reason he's not here today. He's shooting a pilot up in uh, LA for NBC. But in 2005, Griff went to Uganda and was volunteering for the summer. And he stumbled upon a group of kids who were living in squalor. And he decided he had to do something to help them. And so he went home and he collected a bunch of money and, uh, and put all these kids back in school. And for a couple years, things were going great. Cut to 2008. The economy collapses. Hello, Wall Street. I feel like I'm going to get struck down for talking about economic collapse in this building. <laughs> the economy collapses and Griffin freaks out because he's like, how am I going to pay for these kids' education? His donors all head for the hills. And so that was about the time I met him. And I was like, let's get out of town. Let's go, let's go to the woods for a couple days. And we went to the woods. And we were hanging out, and he was just ranting and raving about how hard it is to help people. Unbeknownst to him, I hit record on my garage band, because of course I brought my laptop to the woods with us. <laughs> and I captured what became the first interview of our musical, Witness Uganda. And I said to him, Griffin, why are you killing yourself? Like, why don't you just take it easy, chill out, let it go for a while? And he said, it starts because it's hard. Huh! So anytime something's hard, you're going to question whether or not you're supposed to be doing it. If it was easy, I don't think I would question. But because more often than not, it's hard to raise money or to find a sponsor or to understand what's going on over there when I'm all the way over here, it makes things difficult. So there are times when I'm like, I don't know if this matters. Sidi omukaga, sichi kulu, undi mu maliri bu, oku yamba, chisoboka, okachu sa, na yama okachu sa, okachu sa. I lay in my bed at night and I think to myself, what if I had never met them? What if I never got on that plane? How different would my life be? Like sometimes I'm like, give up, quit. But once you know their names, once you've seen their faces, you can never forget. Siri Omukaka, Sichikulu, Nimu Malirigu, Okuyamba, Chisobaka, Okachusa, Nayamba, Okachusa, Ochusa. There's a passage in the Bible, it's about obeying. Like you're supposed to do it because you're supposed to obey. You don't need to know why you're doing it, you just need to obey. And so there's part of me that does it because I am obeying. Hosanna, Hosanna, Amina, Hosanna, Hosanna, Amina. I felt when we started, I felt clear. It was supposed to be something that I was supposed to share with people and other people were supposed to share with people and they were supposed to share with people about the simplicity of helping because really it could be simple. And I think that's the big thing in, in life and in politics and whatnot. A lot of it is really simple. 
Like the solutions are simple. It's like if everyone pulled their weight, if everyone did what they were supposed to do, it wouldn't be this massive issue. So putting 10 kids through school shouldn't be a massive issue. But I think what happens is everyone doesn't actually want to take on that responsibility. Yes, honey. <laughs> so those words, those words are written in Luganda, and they translate to mean, I am not rich, but it doesn't matter. I want to make a change. Help me change. Chusa, change. And when we wrote that song, we never meant for it to be part of a musical. We, we wrote it as part of a 20-minute long benefit that was supposed to help raise money for these kids in Uganda. But a crazy thing happened whenever we performed the benefit people would come up to us after the show and they would be really emotional and say, that, that's my story, you know? I tried to help somebody. I tried to do something and it was hard. And it dawned on me, you know, we're living in a generation where people desperately want to make a difference. We desperately want to do something, but people are totally confused about how to do it and what to do and what's right. And I totally get it. You know, when I graduated from college, I joined the Peace Corps. And I was in the Islamic Republic of Mauritania in West Africa for two years. And I thought I was going to go there and single-handedly stop the spread of HIV. I literally thought. And they dropped me off in this village in the middle of the Sahara Desert with no electricity, no running water, nobody spoke English, and I was screwed. I had no idea, no idea what I was going to do. And I realized that the only way that I could do anything was to do something that I was good at. And that was theater. And so I, I went to a group of girls. I was working with a group of 16-year-old girls. And I said, girls, let's do a play. What do you want to do a play about? They told me they wanted to do a play about forced marriage because they were at the age where their fathers were beginning to marry them off to men in other faraway villages. I said, great, I've got just the play. It's called Romeo and Juliet. These two lovers are in love, and the parents don't allow it, and Juliet's father wants her to marry somebody else. So we did it. We worked on this play for weeks and weeks, and we got to the performance night. And we were performing under a single light bulb hung off the end of a goal post on our village's soccer field. And we get to that part in the show. And, and P.S., the girls had like braided their hair. If you've never seen like an African girl with the braids, it's like legendary, like artwork. It's amazing. So we get to the part in the show where Friar Lawrence, or in our case, Imam Lawrence, gives Juliet the secret potion that makes it look like she's dead, but really she's just asleep, but Romeo doesn't know that. So the actress playing Romeo comes in, sees Juliet lying dead there, and calls up to the heavens, oh Allah, holy sababu, what did you do, Allah? And she takes her knife out of her pocket, and she smashes it into her stomach, and before she falls down to the ground, she dies, she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a handkerchief. And I'm saying to myself, why the hell is she pulling out a handkerchief? We didn't rehearse it this way. She takes the handkerchief, whips it out, lies it down on the sand, and falls down <laughs> dead. 
And then Juliet wakes up and she sees Romeo laying there and she calls, oh Allah, what do you do, Allah? And she takes Romeo's knife and shoves it in her stomach and she falls down to the ground. And as she's falling, the kids in the audience are screaming out, yo sukunduma, Juliet, yo sukunduma. Translation, watch out for your hair, Juliet. Watch out for your hair. And Juliet sits up and takes out her handkerchief and whips it out and falls down dead again. And I'm standing off to the side and I'm thinking to myself, watch out for your hair. I, we just did a play about forced marriage and the pain of love. And all they got out of this was watch out for your hair. I was devastated. It wasn't until years later that I went back to Mauritania to visit my, my Mauritanian family there and met up with some of those girls in my village. And they, many of them were married now to the men that their fathers had promised them to, and very happily married, I might add. And those girls came up to me and they said, Matt, mi meda yijit de Romeo e Juliet e yo sukunduma. I never forgot about Romeo and Juliet and watch out for your hair. <laughs> And it dawned on me then, it dawned on me then that it didn't matter that, that I hadn't gotten the entire village to revoke forced marriage, you know? Change is hard. Change takes a long time. And we're here today to talk about redefining success. Sometimes it's enough, success is enough just doing the thing that you do best, sharing your light with somebody else. In my case, just doing my thing gave those girls a chance to express themselves, a chance to tell their story, a story that they can repeat to their young daughters and their young sons. And that's the way we change the world, you know? One little piece, one little seed at a time. Thomas Edison already invented the light bulb. That's done. Now we must be the light. And so we have a song in our show. It's called Bella Musana. And the words literally translate to mean, be shining like the sun. So we're going to close with Bella Musana right now. And, um, you know, if we have any singers out there, I might ask some of you to help me out. <laughs> or if we don't have singers, that's OK, too. There is endless light hidden in my soul. But I've learned how to ration my goodness. I save it and hold it till it's right. So I wait and pray with my life unchanged, begging God, won't you show me my purpose? He tells us the dark is only night. Be the light, Bella Musana. Bella Musana. Bella Musana. Be the light in the night. Bella Musana. Bella Musana, Bella Musana, be the light in the night. Try it with us. Join us if you know it. Share your light. Bella Musana, Bella Musana, Bella Musana, be the light. Bella Musana, Bella Musana, be the light. 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 Bella Musana, be the light.
Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Beltran, Michael Kilgore, Nicolette Robinson, be the light. Thank you all so much. Thank you.